And before we dive into the review, let me just ask you if you'd kindly consider clicking on the like button below and also the subscribe button. And if you click on that subscribe button twice, anytime I do publish a new video, you'll be the first to hear about it. And now over to the review. Now in this review, I'll be talking about a pair of Planner Technology headphones from Germany. They're called the Solitaire P headphones. They're rather high end. And when I say high end, I mean 4,800 pounds worth of high end and a company called T plus A. Don't get it wrong because the German company itself doesn't like T and A, it prefers T plus A, hence the plus sign of course. Now these are open backed design headphones and the construction has been quite meticulous in its approach. Let me also, before we get to the closer look section where we look at the actual headphones in person as it were, let me just spend a minute or so just talking about well what's under the hood. So bear with me as I throw a few techie items at you. These headphones use neodymium magnets with a segment shape. The shape itself is matched in length to suit the oval outline of the diaphragm. The idea, says the company, is to, and I quote, ensure that the magnetic field lines generated have a homogeneous course and that no air turbulence occurs. The airflow remains laminar at all times. End quote. Hence the retaining rings and the magnet mount have also been designed to maintain the diaphragm's position accurately in the linear part of the magnetic field. Oh and unlike some other planner designs out there, there are no supplementary opposed magnets. This design decision has been taken to reduce weight. The diaphragm itself consists of a thin film coated with a conductor array whose impedance is around 80 ohms. So that's just some of the techie details. Now, you might think, yeah, 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 so what? But what do they sound like? But before we talk about the sound quality, let's do a little bit of a guided tour and we'll take a closer look. And I'd like you to welcome the newest member of the team. May I introduce you to Arthur. Hello, Arthur. Now, Arthur is a very important member of the team. In fact, you could say he's the most important because he is the head man. And Arthur, with his Giorgio Armani good looks, is here to model the headphones. Go, Arthur. As you can see, Arthur is wearing the headphones in all the aluminium resplendent glory. And I wonder, just a thought, I wondered about the styling of the Solitaire P's and whether they had a, I don't know, a slight Sennheiser HD 650 look. Let me just turn. I don't know, what do you think? It's something about the ear cups which looks ever so slightly Sennheiser HD 650. Now talking about the ear cups, if you look at this part here and also the yoke, the sub-assemblies actually within the ear cups are all attached to that aluminium ear cup there. This apparently is made from a solid piece of aluminium and apparently the machining for each cup takes more than an hour starting from a 35 millimeter thick solid aluminium plate. These yokes here are also machined from solid aluminium. Arthur's gone for a well-deserved cup of tea. Strenuous work, you know, all that modeling. Then if you look at the ear cushions here, they're made by a specialist company in Germany and they consist of allergen-free synthetic leather and Alcantara. Hope you pronounce it that way, Alcantara. It's quite soft around the ears, very comfortable indeed. Now the cables that connect to the ear cups consist of copper conductors with a silver layer. You get two cables in this box, which is a really good thing. I like the fact that you get a 6.35 millimeter connection. You can see that here. And also this little thing here is a Pentacon cable, the inclusion of which I applaud. I would love to see Pentacon cables bundled with more headphones these days. And I would like to see Pentacon supported more 
on headphone amplifiers. Let's bring them a bit closer for you to see. As you can see, the 6.35 single-ended termination is rather more substantial than the Pentacom plug. And at the other end of those self-same cables are these terminations. Now connecting the cables to the ear cups is a pretty simple process. Let me show you. So you can see here the entrance to the socket on the side of the pad. You merely offer the connector to that entrance. You then turn this around, see if I can show that properly, until the whole thing engages. Do you see? Let me do that again. It just pushes in and then you just push to connect and that's it. That's all you need to do. And then you pull to remove. It's a very, very easy process indeed. Suitably refreshed, let's bring Arthur back center stage. And the headphones themselves, well, they look premium, I would say. They actually do feel premium. They feel comfortable and solid on the head and you'll see they have the extended sliding ear pads located on the ear here. Now that gives Arthur a slightly drunken look as though he's just been on a pub crawl wearing T plus A headphones. So let's readjust the headphones to restore his demeanor. Now the company does talk a lot about the light weight of these headphones and they make a point of it on the website. But I would say they're light, relatively speaking, if you know what I mean, not in absolute terms. In absolute terms, they're still fairly weighty. Yes, they're light when you compare them to high-end Odyssey models, for example, but they're a touch heavier than the final D8000 planner magnetic designs. While there are plenty of other high-end headphones out there that are much lighter, if you look at, and I know it's a completely different technology, and I know it's a different price point, but they're German. So if you look at the Sennheiser 800 series, for example, they're far lighter by at least a couple of hundred grams. So unlike Arthur, if you have physical issues with your neck, if you have any neck problems in terms of carrying weight, I would think twice about wearing a pair of these or any planner designs, to be absolutely honest with you. For me though, during the actual tests, they remained comfortable, solid, and quite secure on my head. I was very happy with them, and they basically disappeared in terms of feeling I had headphones on my head. After a little while, I just sort of got on and listened to my music. So I, was, I personally was very happy with the styling and the comfort of these headphones. Oh, and before we hit the sound section, I just wanna mention the price of these things. It was right at the end of January 2020 that the news of these headphones was announced. And now we're in August of the same year. The actual release has been accompanied by a hike, an increase of £200. At the beginning of this video, I said these headphones were priced at £4,800 because I was working on the assumption that the press release would also mirror the final release price, but that ain't so. I try and double and triple check my facts whenever I can, and I did the same with the price and found that in fact, the price had risen by a whole 200 pounds. So now these headphones are priced at a round 5,000 pounds. Now that's a lump of cash in anyone's book. Now looking at it from T plus A's angle, looking at it from there, point of view, there's probably some very good reasons for that increase and the current situation we're in at the moment that the world is actually encountering is probably the main one. But nevertheless, I would still say that the price hike is a bad decision from T plus A. Economically, sure, I can envisage why the increase has occurred. PR wise though, I would say it's a terrible decision. It actually makes the company look greedy and insensitive. Now, I'm sure they're anything but that. I'm sure they're lovely people, very, very nice guys, but the image generated from this price hike is not a good one. And that's it for the closer look section of this review. Let's whiz over back to the handsome chap who's gonna tell you all about the sound quality. And welcome back to the sound tests. So. What do these headphones actually sound like? Well, I began my tests in single-ended mode. That is, I connected the cable 
with the 6.35 millimeter single-ended termination first and I played some vinyl the title track from Roxy Music's Avalon. What I heard here was a tremendous bass performance throughout the song. The percussion was right up front within the soundstage while the bass guitar had a strong role to play here. Lead guitar was also bolstered by the bass frequencies, giving it strength and form while the lower frequency elements of the vocals fattened and broadened the delivery, including female harmony backing singers. The bass certainly added drive to the music, pushing it onward and adding real momentum to the song. As for the mid-range, well I found there was a slight lack of control in the mids, to be absolutely honest, and you could really hear this when the female harmony backing singers came in, because mid-range was a little bit wavery, I thought. There was a lack of control, it was a little bit smeary and slightly bloomy, and there just seemed a little bit of lack of discipline around the mid-range area. Especially when you're looking at a harmony section, when you have a group of harmony vocals working together, you're looking for a little bit more precision and a bit more accuracy. Detail was certainly there. The treble-inspired ride cymbal sounded quite precise. Another example, the secondary percussive effects from the scraper, especially at the beginning of the song alongside the bongos, offered an impressive focus. And yet I did expect more information considering the price, I have to say. I was very happy to hear what was presented and what was there was excellent indeed, but I wanted more. I expected more considering that price tag. So I switched over the source to my Macintosh CD player and I played a little bit of jazz. And I selected a guy called Jeff Kieser. This is on the Columbia label from 1997. The album is called Turn Up The Quiet. The track I chose from this LP was the classic Stompin' At The Savoy, majoring on piano alongside sax with bass following up as support. I was impressed by the big sound presentation here as bass ran alongside the upper frequencies, allowing detail to exude from the resonant strings of the upright bass and the lower reaches of the piano too. Even so, the sax found it a bit difficult to fully present its most subtle aspects because of a rolled off midrange, while the upper frequency areas of the piano were a tad restrained in terms of reverb and upper mid-range delicacy. Dynamic reach was distinctly limited. So basically what I'm saying here was bass was in charge. Bass was almost dictatorial. It really called the shots and by doing that it restricted other elements of the frequency spectrum. Hence while I was impressed with much of what I was hearing from the solitaire P's, I wanted much more. Again, I then turned to the Pentacon cable and Eric Bibbs meeting at the building on vinyl. The track offers a host of backing voices, guitars, percussion and many organic instruments such as accordion and harmonica. What was immediately apparent here, apart from the higher volume, and I had to lower the gain on my preamp to compensate, was the improved mid-range control. It was noticeable when I switched over the cables from single-ended mode to the Pentacon version, the control around the mid-range did improve. Mid-range sounded smoother and a little bit more in tune with the rest of the mix. On this track, vocal crescendos could bark and blur, but with the Pentacon cable attached, crescendos flowed more easily. In single-ended mode, there was a general unevenness of the sonic presentation, but here, with the balanced approach, the Solitaire P headphones sounded as if they had more control of the music. Now, there still remained a lack of space and air within the mids, as the bass tended to throw its weight around again, but the Pentacon certainly made the listening experience far more enjoyable. Now, if accurate music wasn't really the Solitaire P's thing, I wondered whether a more high energy and slightly more chaotic approach would be 
up the Solitaire Peas Alley. So I brought in some heavy metal, a little bit of Iron Maiden here, a smattering of Cradle of Filth there, just to see what the headphones made of those. Without the need to take care of the finessed detail and reverb tails, the Solitaire P merely picked up the information and just launched it at your ears with gay abandon. Yes, the music might not have held the same mid-range insight as I wanted for a set of headphones at this price, but there was plenty of detail to enjoy here that was combined with the strength and the real sense of purpose, plus plenty of bass grunt to stamp the message home. So what do I think of the T plus A Solitaire P headphones? Well, heavy in physical weight and heavy in bass, the T plus A Solitaire P's might lack the expected finesse of its underlying technology, but if bass is your thing, then you should give these headphones a careful demo. There's lots of detail to be had from these Solitaire P headphones and nothing is wasted or missing in the mix. But if you like a rather more warming, meaty bass presentation and you enjoy high energy music, then you certainly won't go wrong with the T plus A Solitaire P headphones. So an intriguing design for a pair of headphones and an interesting sound signature. That's me done for this video. I'll be back on Tuesday with more vinyl and CD reviews. I hope you can join me then. Until then, bye bye for now.